Kat and Nabi Yun Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is, the other is hoping and saying, with there's nothing worthy of worship except the law, he is one along with our partners and associates. And also give open the sandwiches of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a slave servant messenger and seal of the Prophet's peace be upon the Prophet, upon his descendants, upon his companions, and upon the right to the world. And peace be unto you, as salam alaykum. Alhamdulillah, is all the praise due to Allah, the evolver of all things in existence and the evolver of all systems of knowledge. We are forever thankful to Allah, highly glorified as he for once again allowing us to unite for Salat al Juma by which we come to seek his aid, to seek his guidance, to beg for his mercy, and to ask for his forgiveness. In fact, we, we beg for his mercy. That's our significant mercy. And I remember many times hearing songs of have mercy on me. I never really understood the significance of that. Have mercy on me. We read through the Quran, it's prevalent that Allah says that is his, his mercy, it succeeds, super exceeds, is far beyond his wrath. In fact, every surah except one begins, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. It begins with Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. So this ideal, this principle of mercy is so important. Had Allah not had mercy on you, he said we would not even be in existence. Had he not had mercy. So we beg for his mercy. We ask for his forgiveness that we can be restored to become better human beings because that's what life is all about. This whole process of living is about who are you becoming? Who are you growing into? That's why we begin the, the khutbah we began with Allah is Rabbil Alameen. He's the Rabb. He's the evolver. He's the one that allows us to progress, to move from smallness, to move from fear, to move from the ideal of, of thinking about lack and moving towards abundance. Because we live in a world of abundance. We do not live in a world of lack. That's why we say Allah is the merciful benefactor. He is the one that through his mercy he gives us all the benefits we need to fulfill our lives. We're not lacking in anything other than our ability to pursue the abundance that he put all throughout his creation. In fact, he says that he created everything in the earth for you. And all you have to do is just think about that. Allah says of all the creatures in existence, he has created this entire earth for the human being. No being can benefit from this creation and all that it contains like the human being. So we always thankful to Allah, highly glorified see, for what he has done and for what he's doing for us right now. See, Allah just hasn't done something for you. He's constantly doing for us right now as we sit on this floor Allah is doing for us right now. So we thank Allah for what he's done for us and what he's continually doing for us because he is the Rob. He is the one that is shifting us from smallness to greatness. From fear to courage. From ignorance to enlightenment. He's Rob. He's the one that's allowing us to graduate. So we're thankful for what he has done and what he is doing for us. You know, we had the great honor to go through a, a blessed period of our lives. Ramadan is a blessed period. It is a time that we get refocused. It is a time that the Muslim, the believer, work to strengthen the bond with his evolver, with Rabba. And as we made the exit out of this month, out of the month of Ramadan, the challenges are even intensified. Now when I read the Quran, I see a verse where Allah asks a question. He says, O oh man, what has seduced you from your evolver, the generous? 
very, very powerful question. This idea of seduction, this idea of there's some forces working in the world, working in the society to pull you from the bond you should have with your rock. Because once man is disconnected from that relationship with the one who's evolving him, he's in a bad space in life. So the question says, what has seduced you? What is pulling you? What, what have you allowed to be more significant in your life that it becomes much more valuable that you want to lose the relationship with your rob? I'm talking about a conscious relationship. A conscious relationship with the one who's developing you because you're always developing no matter how old you may be. You're now working on your soul. You don't want to be this disconnected from that force. Because once you're disconnected from that force, once you're disconnected from the evolver, then you become vulnerable for the schemes of shaitan. Because it is shaitan who is the one who is working to pull you from that bond. He's the bond breaker because shaitan is the master distraction. He's the master distractor. You know, we've heard this term of the weapons of mass destruction. You've heard that before during the 90s. You heard the weapons of mass destruction. Weapons that were designed to destroy life. They dropped bombs on societies and bombs on people and people have never recovered. If you look at Iraq, not only have they not the, uh, uh, recovered physically in terms of the edifices, they have not recovered psychologically. They have not recovered emotionally because it was a traumatic experience. So they've used weapons of mass destruction to wipe civilizations out, to wipe people out, and some people have never bounced back and have been restored because of the effect of the weapons of mass destruction. Now, Shaitan, who is wise in his wickedness, don't just use weapons of mass destruction, but first of all, he uses weapons of mass distraction. Where man is distracted from most, what's most significant. He's distracted from having feelings for human beings. He's distracted from uh, the need to pray and strengthen the bond with his creator. He's distracted from that. So shaitan is the one who puts in motion weapons of mass distraction that work to pull man from the intimate relationship he should have with his evolver. So Allah says, oh man, what has seduced you from your evolver the most generous? You just think about what Allah has done for your life. He's been generous to you. And if your creator, your, your, your rob, your evolver has been generous to you, gave you life and gave you the capacity to live on the earth and to manipulate his creation, that all of the creation has been willed into existence to serve you, how can you be distracted from that relationship? How can you not show your gratitude? You know, it makes your life take a couple minutes. But when you take Salat out of your life, it becomes like the crack in a building. And over time, the building is worn down, then it collapses. There's holes in the building. Now the building that used to secure you, rain comes through the roof. So when you think about what Allah has done for you, you should be working all the time to show your gratitude to strengthen the bond, that's what the security is all about. To strengthen the bond, Ramadan taught us how to strengthen the relationship. And we taught that during that month, in your world, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that shaitan was locked up. In your world, he still existed in the environment, but in your world, you had mastered self. You had realized that Allah gave you the capacity 
to manage your weaker self. And when he gave you the capacity to master your weaker self, you was in control of your life. Because you know that Shaitan's ability was only to invite. He had no power. Shaitan has no power other than the power of invitation. You and I give him power. So much that when it's all said and done, Shaitan said, oh, don't blame me. Blame yourself. I only called and you came. His power is only in the introduction of those things that will move you from the bond you should have with the bond. So the question was, oh man, what has seduced you, what has pulled you, what has skillfully made you believe that a relationship with something else was more significant than the relationship you should have with the law? The one who has been most generous to you and I. So he talks about how Allah talks about how he created the human being. In fact, he said that he made the human being just like he would put a plant in the earth. He said he created the human being and placed the human being in the earth like a plant. That's the picture Allah gives you of your life. When you think about a plant, when you think about a tree, when you think about any structure that comes out of the ground, Allah says that's the picture of your life. And when you think about a plant and what it evolved from, it evolves from a seed. And what's important for the seed is not just the seed, but where the seed is placed. If the environment is not fertile, then the seed would not get the nutrients it needs to become what it has the power of becoming. It's all about becoming now. So the question in this talk is, who are you becoming? That's why when you take on a name, you take on a name that gives you something to strive towards becoming. If you have a name that, that means the patient, severe, it is a name that allows you to move toward becoming more patient. That name allows you to stretch up to become more than who you are. There's always room for improvement. So Allah talks about this ideal, this picture of the human being. He placed him in the earth to grow just like a plant. And the most significant thing about that plant is that the plant that comes from the seed, it just doesn't go into the earth. The earth has to be fertile. The nutrients must be in the soil. It must be getting sunlight. It has to get rain on or not be able to pull from the environment to get what it needs to become, what it's the destined of becoming. So inside the seed is transformative power. The seed has inside the shell life. But that life is not realized until it is placed in the right environment. If I take a seed right now and throw it on this floor, nothing happens. Because this floor is not designed to feed life. If I take this feed and, and throw it where grass is, I saw where sunlight is coming, I saw where it gets abundance of rain, then that seed begins to draw from the earth. That seed begins to draw from the sunlight. That seed begins to draw from the rain. And now those elements feed and stimulate the life that Allah put inside that seed, and it activates the life, therefore, that seed becomes what is destined to become. So that seed is full of potential, but the potential will never be realized until it's in the right environment. That's why jihad is so important. I'm talking about these names. That's why jihad is so important. Because jihad means that you're struggling, you're working to make conditions better 
so that life can grow. You, you struggle in the political world, you struggle in the academic world, you struggle in the business world, you struggle in your family, you struggle in society to make conditions better so that life can grow, evolve, and make its contribution to life. So when you put the seed in the earth, the power of the seed, once it, it, it breaks through the shell that contains the real power, the real power is inside the shell. And once the seed is placed in fertile soil, then the transformative power takes place. All the elements outside of the seed begin to stimulate the life that's inside the seed. And the seed doesn't grow up first, it grows down. That you and I has to have a firm foundation. We have to be structured. If we're not structured, then we're easily sidetracked and we're easily distracted from that bond, that relationship we should have with our evolver. I want you to realize that the connection with evolution, the connection with evolver in that seed, because the picture of Allah said, he placed you in earth just like that plant. So the seed goes down into the soil. It has to be rooted in something. If you don't have no foundation, if you don't have a root, then you're weak. then the winds of emotions can come and, and shift you in any direction. So the winds of emotions come in the culture. The winds of emotions come through sport and play, and people lose their focus. And when they lose their focus, they lose their power. Because your power is in your focus. So Allah says he placed you in the earth to grow just like a plant. And I want you to remember that that plant is strong. The power in that seed is so strong that I've seen blades of grass come through asphalt. You ride down the street, you ride down the highway, you will see that blades of grass is coming through like concrete. That shows you the power that Allah put in that seed, transformative power that it can push through opposition. Because that's what your life is about. You're going to be faced with struggle. You're going to be faced with struggle, and you have to strive to keep pushing till you get a breakthrough. When that seed is placed in the earth, Think about the pounds of dirt that's put on top of that seed. And then it goes down and has enough power to push through heavy weight of soil that's weighing it down. But the only way you realize your real power and your potential is that you must be engaged in struggle. If you have no struggle, you're not going to realize your real worth and value as a human being. Your real worth and value as a human being is going to be realized through actively engaged in struggle. That's why we talk about jihad. Struggle to make conditions better so that life can grow. And where there's no jihad, where there's no struggle, there cannot be any advancement. Advancement, progress is first based on your capacity to struggle. In fact, Allah says, that he created the human being to struggle. Where you going without struggle? Where you going when it's all easy? If you study the great, you'll see they had great opposition. That's what made them great. And don't think because the opposition looks so big that you can't handle it. Allah said he created you for struggle. And he said that whatever your challenge is, he will not place upon you a challenge, a problem, a burden greater than your capacity to bear. He said he's the creator. 
And if he's the creator, he know what he created you. He know what he gave you. He gave you the capacity to push through opposition. And when you push through opposition, you say, why well, didn't always mean to that? I didn't know I could handle that. In fact, when you deal with the opposition, you realize more of your worth because it says from the very premise, who are you becoming? You discover your worth and value by taking on challenges. The least amount of challenge you take on, the least amount of your potential you realize. So Allah says, he placed you in the earth to grow like a seed. Transformative power. When he talks about the human being, he said that he breathed of his, of his spirit into the human being, and then that human being became a living soul. It's about soul power. It is about your spirit. That's your true worth and value. Your true worth and value is not external things. Your true worth and value is what's on the inside. That's why Allah talks about Muhammad the prophet, peace be upon him, وسلم, that the focus of Muhammad is not on the outside. He says that you have inside Muhammad. That value you have in Muhammad, inside his compassion, his love, his strength, his courage, his patience. That's the real power, that's the real worth. Not on the outside, not what he wore. That's not the worth of Muhammad. Some of my son, the worth of Muhammad is the internal quality. His compassion, his intelligence, his spirit, his, his courage, his capacity to forgive, his patience, his intelligence, his common sense. You know how many people become so religified and lose common sense? It's hard for them to reason. But Allah said that Muhammad the prophet was the only unlettered common sense man. And most people like that. So the transformative power that is inside that seed, the real worth and power, is on the inside of you. That's why Allah said he made your physical body, but then he breathed of his spirit the power of Allah that's inside your body, and then you became a living soul. The deaf, dumb and blind, the spirit of Allah in terms of their mind have been taken out. And shaitan has worked to put his power, his influence inside your body. Don't you know that's the mission of shaitan? The mission of shaitan is to take the consciousness of Allah, the awareness of Allah out of people and to put the consciousness of the devil inside their body. And then they become deaf, dumb, and blind. So who are you becoming? When you think about that plant, when it bursts through the soil, don't you know it is now destined to make a contribution? It gives off color. It gives off aroma. It, get off, it gives off healing properties. When that, when that seed, that plant bursts through that soil, it's now making a contribution. The question is, what are you giving to life? As you strive, submitting your will to Allah, what's your contribution to life? In fact, there's a question I ask people all the time. I said, let me ask you a question. I said, when it's all said and done, what will be your legacy? As you make your contribution, what will be your legacy? What do you leave behind that others can build off of because of your life? What will be your legacy? What happened by which you came through life and life became better? You made a great contribution that it impacted people's lives in a significant way. 
what would be your legacy? And when I ask some people that question, they, they startled. You know why they started? Because they never asked themselves that question. Well, what will be my legacy? What will be the impact or the contribution I've left as I came through this life? How have I touched people? What will people remember me for? We talk to all those who came before us. We think about what we got from our mothers, our grandmothers, our grandfathers, our fathers. We, we, we think about what they left us. We talk about all the prophets and the messages. We think about what they left the world. That's their legacy. And my question to you is, what will be your legacy? Very important question. Because it's all about contribution, it's all about giving. And when we look at that plant life, that plant life is always giving something. It's giving off the shade. It's giving off the oxygen. It's giving off the aroma. It's giving off the science called aromatherapy, where people study the science of aroma for therapeutic healing. That people have went into the earth and studied plant life, and they've healed themselves from the aroma that comes from those plants that Allah put in there, just, oh, this is for real. So as that plant bursts through the soil, it's destined to make a contribution. And as a doer, as slave servants of Allah, that is our mission. Our mission is to make a contribution. It's all about environment. I want to talk to you about environment because if you put that seed in the wrong environment, it doesn't grow. There's weeds in that environment. And the weed is the opposition that works to choke the life out of that plant. Don't you know there's forces working to choke out your life? Out your business life? Out your family life? Out your educational life? out your physical life, there are weeds in environments that's working to literally wipe you out, to put you in a position of being deaf, dumb, and blind. Rabbi Nathan, if you're doing your house and what's the happening to your house what you can do, I don't know. Yes, that's the way go. So it talks about the seed. You know, Allah talks about He created the human being and He placed them in a garden. Starts in a garden, then it ends in a garden. Then He said, "In we have gardens with rivers flowing beneath. Rivers flowing as life. Where there's flow, there's life. There's energy. There's movement. There's no stagnation. It's progress." So it starts in the garden, fertility, life, vegetation, the right food, nourishment, fertility, abundance, good air, clean air, good soil. That's a garden, tranquility. And all you have to do is ask yourself, look at how far man has got from the garden. <coughs> Death, destruction, aggression, hate, bitterness, Envy. He's gotten away from the place Allah created him in. He created him and placed him in a garden. A place where life can grow. But look at how far man has got from the garden. He's now living in a hostile environment. Great competition. So much he's willing to kill. For literally nothing. Because shaitan has created a toxic environment. An environment that adversely works against the growth and the development of the human being. Now there's only three things you can do in any environment. And we look at Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we'll see that he was a man who was on a mission to transform by the grace of Allah his environment. And he did that. And when they wasn't strong enough, they had to migrate. They had to run between Mecca and Medina. They had to move because the environment was 
too hostile. They weren't strong enough to compete with those forces that was working to wipe them out. So we had to move. We had to get strong enough. We move away. That's smart. That's strategy. We're not strong enough. And then it came a point when Muhammad the prophet Peter the prophet said, from this point on, there's no more running. From now on, it's taqwa what he had. There's no more running. It's God consciousness, Allah consciousness, and then struggling in his path. And then you realize that the question is, if Allah is with you, then who can be against you? That's the question. See, if Allah is with you, can't nobody be against you if you believe that. So there came a point where there's no more migration. We can't move no more. We want to work to build community life. And if we're going to work to build community life, we have to struggle, and the struggle is in motion to release the highest aspirations of the human being. You're struggling to realize your true worth as a human being because you realize that the forces outside of you that, is, that are not in line with the spirit of Allah can't compete with you if you really believe that. Now, why would Allah give you the example of Muhammad the prophet to follow if it wasn't possible? You think Allah would do that? Say so you follow Muhammad the prophet and he worked to transform a world transform his environment if it wasn't possible for you? That would be unfair. So the prophet transformed this world and we benefit from that world right now. Because the ultimate result of that transformation was we received revelation of Quran. That's the end result of that transforming movement. So he said, there's no more running. Now, there's only three things you can do in any given environment, brothers and sisters. You can migrate, you can adapt, or you can change it. You can migrate, you can move from the environment, you can adapt and become one with the environment, just like the environment, or you can change it. Those are the only three things you can do. And when you look at the world, we can't, we can't uh, adapt to that. We have to create a better world. We can't become one with the world that is in motion to wipe you out. Don't you know I read Chicago over the 4th of July weekend? I believe it's 112 shootings and like 15 murders. You see, you see the kind of toxic environment that has come into existence? <laughs> Where people have become haters, hate themselves, low worth, hate other people, devalue the human being. That's why a young brother and sister got to get away from calling themselves names that, that take them down. I told you before, when you take on a name, that name give you something to strive toward becoming. The name give you something to stretch and reach for. If you have a name that means nothing, there's no motivation to become anything. That's why when brothers call each other niggas and dogs, that's a demotion. Allah said he created Kalakon and Sand, that he created the human being. And the reason why there's no respect for human life is because most people have lost the concept of what it means to be a human being. Now our mission is to teach people what it means to be human. That's why the mission of the devil is to take the human being out of the human body. Do you understand what I said when I said that? The mission of shaitan is to take the human being out of the human body. Shaitan wants to take love out of the human body. He works to take forgiveness out of the human body. He works to take compassion out of the human body. And all you have is a shell of a being. And then he begins to deposit his influence into the human being. His mission is to take the human being out of the human body. To take out respect, to take out dignity, to take out shame. 
You know the hadith where it says about the saying of the, of the prophets of old that people held on to was where there's no shame, do as you will. See, I remember growing up, people say, you know, you need to be ashamed of yourself. See, when there ain't no shame, you do anything. That's why the world is all messed up. There's no shame. So shame becomes your protection. When you lack shame, you're vulnerable to do anything. So we have to get back to this point where people have a sense of shame, a sense of pride, real life faith. So we can't follow the footsteps of the devil because the devil's mission is to take the human being out of the human body. So we have to work like Muhammad, the prophet, P.J. Palm, to work to change the environment. No more running, no more migration, no more moving. Get strong enough and work to change the environment so life can grow, express itself, and make its contribution to the world. Allah said, Verily, he placed you in the earth to grow like a seed. Let me give you one verse of Muhammad the Prophet before we conclude. Talking about this plant, talking about this environment, Muhammad the Prophet, peace upon him, said, Any Muslim who plants a tree gains the reward of giving in charity. What is eaten from it is charity. What is stolen from it is charity. What the animal is eating, what the birds eat, it is all charity. Anyone or anything that takes from the tree earns for the planter the reward of giving charity. Here's the environment, here's the tree, here's the contribution. I remember going to people's backyard, you know, stealing apples. Still, me and my cousin died, we going in and take apples off a tree. Stealing, that's not my property, that's their yard. But the law said, through Prophet Muhammad, whoever does that, they receive a charity. The birds that eat from the tree, here's the plant life. The birds that eat from the tree, the animals, that's a charity. Here's the picture of your life, like this tree is making a contribution, it's sustaining life. In fact, that tree is the greatest symbol of charity. It is constantly giving the oxygen that we breathe in to sustain our life. That tree gives off the shade, it gives off the, 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 the wood. He is a constant contributor to life. So Allah said he placed you in the earth just to grow, just like the seed. So a struggle. And the purpose of jihad is to work to create conditions so that life can grow. Whether it's business life, whether it's community life, whether it's political life, we have to struggle to create conditions where life can grow, where the life is pushed to rise to become more. That's why I gotta emphasize, when you take on this name, this name is giving you something to become more of, you're striving to become more. There's no, there's no stopping. And age is not a factor, there's no stopping because the older you get, the more in debt you go into yourself. You start working on soul power. You're not moved by materialism. You're working on spirit now. You're working on intelligence. You're working on patience. You're not moved by those things that moved you at a younger stage in your life. So it's about soul power. That's why I talk to you about that seed. That seed has transformative power. It's locked up inside the shell of that seed. The abundance of life, Allah said, he put in your body. <clears throat> because when he created you, he gave you everything you need for your life. When Allah created you, he gave you exactly what you need for your life. Now, understand this here. You're not lacking in anything for your life. Whatever you need, Allah gave you for your life. And then in what you don't have, tangible, he gave you the ability to at least ask others to help you. Another thing we have to get past, being afraid to ask, I need help, can you help me? Not, not our dependency, but that's what a human being is for. That's what a brother and sister is for. You're talking about community life, can you help me? That's what the zakat is all about. The zakat is not limited to uh, money. But money is very important. Allah says, so fear Allah as much as you can, listen and obey and spend charity for the benefit of your own soul. 
and those who are saved from the grittiness of their soul, those are the ones who will prosper. Allah says, spend give. And I want you to give to the master so the master can be strong enough to do his job of assisting those who need help. That's what the Mashiach must be perceived as. The Mashiach must be perceived as Beitul Nasser. It is a house of help. You know, people go to the hospital because they want to they go to the hospital because they're not feeling well. They want to feel better. People come to the Mashiach because they want to feel better. People come to the Mashiach because they feel down. They feel depressed. They feel that they're lacking stuff. So they need to be restored. So when people come to the mass here, they come with that kind of spirit. They come because they need help. Whether it's spiritual, whether it's material, whether it's moral, whether it's financial. So the mass here must be strong enough to do its job of aiding those who come to the mass here for help. So don't, don't, don't allow yourself to be in a position to, to allow the mass here to be in a weak state. The mass here should be strong so it can do its job. Its job is such a the place where people pray and then they're restored. You go down and you come up because you see Allah is Akbar. Allah is the one who will lift you up. But he'll lift you up by using other people to aid you, to give you the assistance that you need. So don't be afraid to ask for help. In fact, Jesus said, and who will be my helpers and who will be my answer? Beto Nasser, help the answer. See yourself as an answer, a helper working for the renovation and elevation of man. Peace be unto you. As salamu alaykum.